Push-ups are intimidating, but they don't have to be. Whether you're doing them on the floor or on the wall, they actually look the same. And I'm gonna show you how to do all the different versions and that you never need to do a push-up on your knees or a girl push-up ever again. So first of all, this is what a push-up looks like. You come to a high plank position, wedging yourself between your hands and your feet, keeping the entire body tight and engaged and moving as a unit as you bend at the elbow and come back up. Inhaling as you go down and exhaling as you come up. But if that's not where you're at today, that's okay. First of all, regardless of the surface that you're using, your hands want to be just about as high as your shoulders, or maybe slightly higher. When we're on the floor, slightly higher allows us to feel wedged between our hands and feet. A good, thing to, good place to start is take your elbows to your shoulders and press those hands right out in front of you. That's going to be a good push-up position. Then what do your elbows do? They want to flare away at about 45 degrees, especially for starters. When we talk about getting really wide, that becomes an cha extra challenging push-up. When we go really narrow, that's a tricep dominant push-up. So just think thumbs to the shoulder, hands straight forward, and then elbows out at 45 degrees. Whether I'm on the floor, the box, or the wall, that's where I want my hand placement to be. Then the entire body is moving as a unit. So as always, we have our core engaged, tailbone towards the floor, if not slightly tucked ribs towards the hips, squeeze the whole body, and then this is what we're doing in that push-up. Now, my feet do not need to be pinned together. They can be slightly wider to give me a bigger base of support. So, I showed you how to do a push-up on the floor. Now, if doing them on an inclined surface is what you need, you're going to come to a workout bench, a chair, a kitchen counter, or even a wall. And you put your hands just about as wide as your shoulders, it might be a little narrower if you're on a chair and that's okay. And then I come to a tall plank position on the box. I'm gonna bend at the elbow and lower my body as one complete unit, trying to bring my chest all the way to that box. So when you're doing incline push-ups, the goal is to pick a surface that you can get 10 solid reps out at. And then once you feel like 10 reps has become easy, you can incrementally lower that surface until you get to the floor. There's a few other things you can do, though, to make the floor a little easier. The first is adding a yoga block underneath your chest. Now, yoga block's nice because it has three different heights. Or if you have two yoga blocks, you have even more heights. Put that yoga block right underneath your chest, and then do your push-up over the yoga block. We wedge ourselves between our hands and our feet. Heels go past the toes, and now I'm in a nice tall position and then I know I've lowered down far enough because my chest hits the yoga block. And that helps me know that I'm at least achieving a certain depth and consistency in my reps. And then as you get stronger, you can lower it down to a lower setting. A few common issues that we end up seeing that the yoga block can actually help correct for are, and I'll show you without that yoga block, the shoulders sinking here because the elbows go too far out and I'm not keeping that upper back engaged. So we wanna make sure that we stay nice and tight and lower between the hands and don't sink between the shoulder blades. So having that, having that block there just helps us have a little check that we're staying nice and tight and lowering only as far as we can control the movement. The final kind of push-up that you can work on is a negative push-up. So say doing the entire thing coming back up is too challenging for you, but you can lower down. That's what we're gonna work on. So this is a negative or a hand release push-up. You come to a tall plank position, keep everything nice and tight, and then you lower down to the floor with control until you get all the way there. And then if you can, you can come up as a unit. But if that's too challenging, once I lower down to the floor with control, I come to my knees, to the tall plank, and then I lower down again. And doing the negative portion of the push-up is challenging, but it gives you a break on the harder half.